Hello and a very warm welcome to another interesting edition of the program CAC Weekly, a weekly program that keeps you abreast on the activities and achievements of the Corporate Affairs Commission. My name is Amina Jabril. In continuation of our focus on the CAMA 2020 implementation and impact on businesses, we shall today take a look at its impact on civil society organizations and other non-governmental organizations. We'll be right back after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Aside from ensuring transparency and accountability in governance, the Companies and Allied Matters Act CAMA 2020 is poised to develop the private sector and democratize the process of doing business in Nigeria. The CAMA 2020, the game changer as it is often called, is poised to further enhance and facilitate trade and investment in the country. Set for implementation in January 2021, CAMA 2020 has 870 sections which are classified into chapters on the Parts A to G. Part A deals with the composition and administration of the registry which functions as a regulator. Part B has 29 chapters which stipulates the life cycle of companies from their incorporation through to liquidation. Part C and D have 11 and 2 chapters respectively and set out provisions that govern limited liability partnerships, LLPs, and limited partnerships, LPs. Parts E and F reprised sections on the registration and regulations of business name and incorporated trustees, with a few changes outlined in chapters 3 and 7 respectively. Part G introduces the quasi-judicial body. An important milestone for the business sector, the CAMA 2020 removes substantially a significant number of bottlenecks that heat at home prevents market penetration by MSMEs and significantly reduces the reporting obligations and requirements that may ordinarily inhibit the growth of MSMEs. A major stakeholder in the implementation of the CAMA 2020 the Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, NASIMA, is excited about the CAMA 2020. The second deputy president of NASIMA, Dele Kelvin Oye, gives an insight on the potentials of the landmark law, benefits for the private sector and the readiness of stakeholders to partner with the CAC to ensure successful implementation. The Common Alliance Matters Act 2020 is one of the very aggressive attempts by government to properly bring the business sector into focus. I have realized that incorporation and management of economy is the first step towards investment in any country that simplifies the process and makes it very easy for small businesses. If, for example, now if your turnover is less than 25 million, you don't have to do audit. And so if your company has not started business, you don't also need to file an audit before the corporate affairs. This is a major bottleneck that affected access to business for small businesses. So it's a welcome development. And the way it has also been made, there's also room for limited partnerships. Now, where if you have a partnership, you can have it just like a limited liability company. Unless you want to raise funds, then you need to you need to now register as a limited liability. Then you also have situations, one of the biggest problems for us at the end that you want to form a company, you need to have a partner. But now you are allowed to form a, a private company as an individual. So this confidentiality that normally comes with ownership and the, this thing now has been minimized now. So there's a legal process where you can form a company as an individual. So there are many, several other things that were incorporated which have made it a lot easier doing business in Nigeria. I don't have any doubt like to be successfully implemented because this is a law that will regulate how you do business. It's not like any other law. So for you to be properly structured, you have to comply. And we are even our partners, lawyers and various professionals involved, they're already getting familiar with the law. I think the law has started because by law, once you gazette, automatically it is applicable. So the law has started, and I think the provision will be very successful. The other thing I see is there's huge opportunities for a lot of professionals who are worried that their initial sole assets have been diminished 
by allowing any person to be able to file to incorporation and everything. There are many ways you can make form uh, huge partnerships with the Corporate Affairs Commission by helping them to expand the implementation of several acts of the, of the law. I'll give you an example, the issue of incorporated trustee, which has been a major problem. When before now, you have to get the Attorney General's consent before you can register a limited by guarantee company. Now the law now provides that if you apply to the Attorney General, after 30 days, if he has not given you consent, you can advertise in three newspapers the application. After 28 days, if there are no objection, the company affairs can go ahead. So with that kind of thing, you move on necessary discretionary issues before, where you have to go to the Ministry of Justice, and you are not necessarily familiar with the terrain, and the thing can take almost forever. So we are quite happy as a Nasima that the government has listened to some of our concerns, the bottlenecks, those issues that diminish applicability of laws. To some extent, I think it's a very, very significant uh, movement towards democratizing the process of doing business in Nigeria. And I'm not surprised that we have moved from uh, 15 steps from 2019 to 131 on global index. And I think once we start this, we're definitely going to move further a better to a better position. So Nigeria will be extremely competitive. There are also issues of insolvency. With before, if you go into a company that is currently insolvent, the option is just to liquidate. But now under the law you are asked first to try if you can still revive before you can liquidate. So these are things that will make us competitive and put us right at 21st century global competitive edge. And I think it's a huge improvement on the last law for Nigeria. And for especially for the small businesses, we have completely changed on what you can determine what is a small business, what is a big business. Unlike before, the, if this thing was quite low with inflation, it didn't make sense. But now it has moved the index up, and now you can actually see as a small business with 120 million turnover, and you can still take all the benefits, including the tax benefits, not the finance out of uh, 2020. So all these, I can say. It is a major, major right step in the right direction. And I think those who criticizing the law should take time to read through and look at the benefits fully at raise any concerns. And where we feel there's need for change, we we'll also go back and make those amendments. But let's give it a chance. The only concern I heard was from the religious bodies who did not want to be regulated. But I think they apply the same law abroad where they have branches. So we should also try and use the same, if they are currently complying with London and the US on those areas, I don't see why they cannot comply here. The only concern was that maybe because government may use that as a way to take over their choices. But I think you are doing the right thing. You have no fear. And I don't see any challenges. At Nasima, we fully embrace it. We are part of it and we are ready to partner. The signing of the Kama 2020 into law by President Muhammadu Buhari on 7th August 2020 generated huge debate in many circles, particularly from civil society organizations and religious bodies. In a bid to allay the fears of such bodies and many other Nigerians that the law is not targeted at anyone, the CAC stepped up its public consultations and sensitization to raise more awareness on the landmark law. In a chat with CAC Weekly, the Executive Director of Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, CSLAC, Awal Ibrahim Musa of Sanjani, haps on how the Kama 2020 will aid Nigeria's fight against corruption, as well as sanitize operations of civil society organizations and other NGOs. Awal Ibrahim Musa Rafsanjani, Executive Director, Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center and Head of Transparency International Nigeria Office. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. What do you make of Kama 2020? Kama 2020 is one piece of um, legislation that has potential if properly implemented to reduce the cost of corruption, uh, to also bring about more transparency and accountability in the business sector and ensure that um, there will be more uh, proper accountability in the way and manner in which you know um, government and individual you know operates and also even acquire uh, properties 
What do you mean by it will help um, reduce corruption and ensure transparency? In what ways? There are many ways. First, as you know, there are a lot of secrecy by so many people that are actually hiding under their disposition to acquire uh, properties that are not that their wealth cannot be explained. Secondly, there are some people in the public sector uh, using their position to acquire illegally or through corrupt means to acquire certain you know, um, properties or even you know, uh, resources generally. So with the Kama Bill, particularly beneficial ownership, because the beneficial ownership is what we have been conversing to have because Nigeria had made commitment in the anti-corruption conference or summit that took place in 2016 where the president of Nigeria made that commitment to have beneficial ownership register because it is through the beneficial ownership register that you will know who owns what, who acquired what and how did he or she uh, acquired that. Secondly, uh, all these pre-bullers and fraudulent tax waivers that some individual are giving to themselves, especially those who are in government or those who are connected in the government, you will be able to know and establish who owns which company. Thirdly, it will also help to ensure that we track money that are being used for financing terrorism. Without beneficial ownership and karma, it will be extremely difficult to expose those who are financing terrorism those who are also doing you know, um, drugs, criminality, with that karma, it will be difficult to actually ensure that you know, even tax properties are imposed. So there are a lot of you know, potential benefits to minimize corruption and abuse of power. We totally support the effort to bring in sanity in the um, way and manner in which businesses are conducted in this country. How much do you think we are losing to corruption on an annual basis there that are, this law is now coming to address? There are a lot of um, you know, figures or estimation put together. Uh, currently, we have over $50 billion that we are losing annually uh, within Africa. And this is as a result of, you know, uh, Illicit financial um, flow that lack of legislation like this is aiding to happen. So we believe that if Nigerian government is committed to fighting corruption, they can use they can actually use this piece of legislation to ensure that you know the opportunities for people to siphon public taxpayers' money will have been minimized and prevented you know uh, the situation from happening but only when there is a political will to do that to do that mm -hmm. and I believe that um, civil society uh, like Sislag, we are committed to working and supporting government to ensure that you know uh, the karma is actually you know um, succeeded you know uh, beneficial particularly the beneficial you know ownership aspect is succeeded because we need to ensure that we bring some level of sanity and decorum in the way and manner in which businesses and you know unexplained wealth are occurring in this country. Democracy should not be a lesson for looting. As it is now, there's a huge competition at different you know uh, tiers of government for looting and stealing and embezzlement. And law like this can help to checkmate these excesses and that is why we believe as uh, CISLAC, as which is the national chapter of transparency international mm -hmm. we believe that we need to do everything possible to support government to prevent you know this outright looting of public funds mm -hmm. and also using company or using business name to finance terrorism finance drugs and do even uh, trafficking because if you don't know the identity of all these companies, they can be using their company to commit all these human, you know, uh, human rights abuses, crime against humanity, 
for a lot of NGOs and, you know, um, NGO civil society and religious bodies. They've ticked against the Karma 2020. They said they have, it's all about, you know, um, taking control of their ownership and all of that. With the law now gazetted, what does that mean for those kind of NGOs? Especially NGOs whose operations and finances are shrouded in secrecy. Well, first and foremost, I want to say that um, uh, there's no much cause for alarm because any credible civil society organization uh, will not be afraid, you know, uh, with, you know... Uh, but let me quickly uh, ask you this. How many credible civil society organizations do we have in this country? I don't have the figure, but I know there are so many credible and responsible civil society organizations mm -hmm. that are operating in Nigeria. And, of course, you know, um, civil society, apart from registering with Corporate Affairs Commission, they also register with SCOMO. You know, you actually, for you to operate, you know, uh, even to do financial transaction, you need to get certification of uh, anti-money laundering, you know. And many organizations that I know that are credible, they have gotten that certification and uh, they have not been involved in any um, fraudulent or any financial uh, scam. Most people see civil societies and non-governmental organization NGOs as a third wing of political parties. Is that what is obtainable? That's not correct. The first and foremost, let's, let's also get this in very clear. Political parties are different from civil society organization. The new civil society organization that are working in the area of human rights, anti-corruption, and you know improving, demanding for uh, improved governance in the country, or even you know working around issues of uh, service delivery in terms of uh, education, healthcare system, and even environmental you know um, uh, consciousness or environmental protection, or working on promoting women's rights or development generally, you cannot see them associated or being, you know, uh, seen as front for political parties. Now, we need to have this in, in context and perspective. Some desperate politician, they created what usually they name, they name them coalition. You will hardly see any of those groups called coalition that are not properly registered. It's a loose network of association of politicians and government officials because when government officials want to steal money, they also set up their own NGO. So you will see that they are not consistent and they are not actually doing anything for the good for the nation. But if you want to know the credible organization, civil society organization, you can see even you know from their website, from their documentation, they have board, they meet regularly, they have financial audit report, they have uh, annual report, they have visible evidence to show that they exist and they are not fronting for any politician or government or anybody. They are independent and they run their you know, programs and projects responsibly without any fraud or anything. If you find anybody in civil society that is doing that, probably are those ones that are planted by government official or by politicians. And with this law, with all of them out, with the Kama 2020, with all of them out? The, the Kama 2020, it is possible if you are not established for the purpose of which you say you are going to operate, mm. it can expand and it can expose you. Mm. Because if you are financing terrorism, if you are doing human trafficking, if you are you know, supporting corrupt people, or if you are being used to siphon public taxpayers' money, either by a government official or by a politician, you will cease to exist. Okay. Now that the law is gazetted, the Corporate Affairs Commission did say they will start implementation in January 2021. For a lot of people, making one law, uh, making a law, and acting it is one. Implementation is where the issue is. Just how optimistic are you that the implementation of the CAMA 2020 will be carried out to the fullest? Well, first and foremost, part of um, the suggestion that you know uh, we have offered to the uh, Corporate Affairs Commission uh, is that they should actually constitute a group of experts with diverse relevant competencies and draw from different you know, sectors 
to assist in establishing uh, or is in the establishment or in the implementation of this law. Secondly, it is important that before they begin to do the implementation, they carry out sensitization and awareness so that people who have concern, you know, through this interactive session, through this sensitization, their concern could be addressed. It is important that, you know, uh, the implementation is not about with hunting. It is about ensuring that, you know, you establish a system that is transparent, that is accountable, that is meant to address the problems that led to the establishing or that, you know, led to the legislating the law. Mm -hmm. But if the idea is to, with, you know, is to undermine or to uh, emasculate the effectiveness of civil society, especially those ones that are demanding for accountability, those ones that are insisting for human rights protection, and those ones that are insisting that governance should be done responsibly through democratic means. And if you really want to use this to cage them, then that's really bad. Is so, that what you think? No, no, no. I'm saying that, you know, if the implementation, if the law is going to focus on emasculating civil society groups who but are you demanding... you have worked with them. Listen. You what, have worked with them. So, and you I, do know... I say, listen, mm. I am saying today is... Mm. Today is the uh, current leadership in um, Corporate Affairs Commission. Mm. Tomorrow, another leadership can come with mm. negative mindset. Mm. The current leadership, we have worked closely with them mm. to this level mm. of having this law. Mm. We have supported the um, the karma, especially the aspect of the beneficial ownership mm. and some other areas. But I am saying that within the law itself, many people, rightly or wrongly, have expressed concern. Mm. And I'm saying that the Corporate Affairs Commission mm. need to listen to those concerns if they are genuine enough to... But now that it has been gazetted, is there any room for concerns? Absolutely, to be absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Uh, first and foremost, that is why I say decentralization is necessary. They said that's what they are going to do in January. They're going to be having stakeholders yeah, yeah. Uh, meeting across the country. It is absolutely necessary to do that so that you are led fear that some people are wrongly mm. or they perceive you know, what the law is all about. That is one. Number two, it is also important that, you know, you also carry along people yes. to appreciate what the law intend to do, okay? And then, it is also important to further clarify to Nigerians that it's not what some people are saying that the law will do, which is to say uh, the, the CAC will take over uh, the, the businesses or the organizations of, you know, uh, people. Yeah. Through that sensitization, that can clarify and can give confidence and hope to many Nigerians who had the, the perception that the law is meant to target their businesses or to target their organization, yeah. which I believe that may not be the, so may not be, uh, the sole intention of the law. Yeah. But you can never uh, 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 say if things you know, uh, take different dimension. And that is why we are very, you know, um, conscious of the fact that this sensitization, you know, will go a long way to at least give confidence to Nigerians that mm. the law is not meant to take over their businesses or it is not meant to take over mm. their organizations uh, without any due process. Awal Ibrahim Musa Rafsanjani, many thanks indeed for your time. Thank you very much. And that is the size of our package for this week. We do hope you enjoyed watching. For comments and inquiries, please take advantage of our social media handles and helplines. On Twitter, it is at CAC Nigeria 1. On Instagram and Facebook, it is Corporate Affairs Commission. Our email is cservice at cac.gov.ng. Our website is www.cac.gov.ng. And our helplines are 081 822 99016 080 and 090-874-01-0906. Do join us next week for another interesting edition of the program. Same time, same station. From me, Amina Jabril and the whole team here, it is bye for now.